Thank you for having me here, Jess. Uh, and you know, I echo a lot of the sentiments that were shared earlier. Certainly, this is a a uh, mm -hmm. uh, an issue that will bring about significant loss of confidence in the market in what's already a very very fragile crypto market at this time. Um, the question in in most people's minds is, oh, if this can happen to somebody like FTX, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know, becoming more of a mainstream name globally, then maybe it could happen to other unregulated players everywhere else. Mm -hmm. But first, let's localize the issue here. How exposed are Filipino investors to FTX? Based on what we know from the market, uh, not as much, right? So Filipinos tend to uh, flock to a different uh, global unregulated player. Uh, locally, we have a couple of, uh, we have a few uh, uh, regulated exchanges that don't have exposures to, to FTX. So mm -hmm. impact may be minimal, uh, but it's a $50 billion hole globally, right? And I imagine that there were Filipino clients of FTX that are badly affected. And there are also Filipino holders of FTT, which is now uh, likely going to zero if it's not already at zero. Okay, now, like more to your point earlier, what does this uh, do when it comes to uh, crypto's credibility as an asset class? Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I do think that um, uh, over the past 10 years, we've been seeing crypto uh, try to enter uh, mainstream finance uh, or, or mainstream consciousness. Um, I think uh, we're taking a, a bit of a step back here, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, FTX represented a uh, probably the first big sign in, in many years that uh, the industry is working closely with regulators to, to try and and uh, create a safe space for investors, um, but you know, uh, just this this trend has um, uh, this trend of moving towards regulation started long before FTX mm -hmm. and its CEO uh, Sam Bankman-Fried, and it's going to continue after that. So we're just taking a, I guess, a step back here, uh, but probably longer term, we're going to see more regulation actually put into place. What then is left to be done to make sure that the industry actually cleans up its act? You know, there's there's a couple of things suggest that uh, I think the, the crypto industry has lacked globally, mm -hmm. uh, and that is regulatory clarity and regulatory enforcement. Uh, fortunately for, for uh, the Philippines, we actually have a lot of uh, regulatory clarity. Mm. The Banco Central has regulated the industry way, since way back in 2017. Uh, but I think our challenge here locally is more a matter of enforcement, right? We still have probably the largest uh, crypto exchange uh, operating actively in the Philippines outside of regulation. We still have a lot of Filipino users uh, transacting in, in, I would say, uh, riskier areas of the market. So there's still a lot that uh, needs to be done in enforcement. Uh, but the Philippines, I, I think we're, we're headed in the right direction here. But how optimistic are you that there's still a chance for crypto to actually be part of mainstream portfolios? What saving grace are you seeing here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so I think um, uh, the the fault of of uh, specific players in the industry do not actually dampen from uh, the over overall promise of crypto, and that is uh, greater financial inclusion and, and greater economic freedom. Uh, those uh, selling points, if you will, or value proposition uh, are still there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it just uh, will take a lot more time and effort now on the part of uh, incumbent players to try and rebuild that trust. But, you know, markets uh, do tend to bounce back. But how are you at least going to lift up sentiment here, considering the fact that there's been a series of fallouts already, even prior to FTX? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, um, uh, while it's definitely a, a troubling development for the market that uh, a lot of people are losing funds on these platforms, uh, it might also uh, end up proving to be a necessary development, right? Mm -hmm. This is, is, I would say, impossible to, to happen to uh, an institution that's uh, fully regulated because institutions would be required to uh, maintain assets back one is to one uh, institutions would not be allowed to lend customer assets without their consent so these behaviors have actually already been curbed uh, in traditional finance and we just need to see more of it in the crypto space and i think it's actually incidents like this that would uh, prompt regulators to enforce more strictly and also for consumers to be a lot more discerning about where they put their funds into.
Mm -hmm. But we're talking about the crypto space. I mean, there are a number of lows, but there were also highs here. I mean, just a year ago, crypto was at an all-time peak. You have Bitcoin topping 67,000. And then some projections even pointing to above 100,000. Then Terra USD's collapse happened. And then you have Celsius filing for bankruptcy. What's happening to the ecosystem? So, so I think we're still in the... Uh, you know, I, I hate to keep saying this because I think it's uh, I'm almost like a broken record now, but we're still in the very early days of the industry, right? So I would say that a lot of the applications that, uh, you know, that you, you mentioned uh, the collapse of, of Terra and, and Luna, um, you also mentioned uh, 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 platforms that have uh, 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 had solvency issues this year. We're still in the process of really uh, figuring out uh, the fundamentals of what this this mm. new asset class can offer, right? And along the way, there will be hype cycles that uh, create uh, what, you, what we might call uh, asset bubbles within the space. Um, but you know, it's also in the uh, the bursting of these bubbles and um, the ensuing uh, controls put in place after that that will you know see this see this space actually grow for for the longer term. Okay, but but up to when do we see this early stages, so to speak, happening? And when do you see things maturing? And until then, how should investors take position? You know, I, I see um, two key things uh, that need to happen, Jess. One is we actually need more uh, trusted institutions uh, enter the space. Now, granted, a key ethos of, uh, of the crypto space currently is decentralization and, I guess, decentralized finance. Uh, but I also do think that financial services at the end of the day are about trust, right? And, mm. and we need trusted institutions to to start uh, uh, making its presence felt in the crypto markets. Uh, the other thing that I'm looking at, uh, Jess, is the overall market environment. We're also living in a very tumultuous time, not just for uh, for the market, but also in, in geopolitics. Mm -hmm. And until that uh, improves and uh, inflationary fears are allayed, uh, we probably we will we probably will see a, a protracted uh, bear market, un unfortunately.